Matt Hall of Case and Online here with Martavia Serving, Thomas Gibson. I hate to say like former Wildcats because you guys, you know, are still Wildcats and that kind of stuff, but K-State grads. Um, we're here to talk a lot about, about TBT. I think everyone knows about the basketball tournament by this point. It's something that over the last, I don't know, three, four, five years has gotten really big. Um, the first question I want to ask before we talk about the tournament uh, is that support matters for this kind of thing. I know there's a deadline to get that, but how can people support you guys? I know that, you know, they go to a site, but what can they really do to support the cause, you know, this tournament for you guys? Um, I just think, you know, as far as getting players, you know, voting, having support, you know, creating a profile and voting. Um, and it also benefits them because, you know, right. as they vote, um, if we was to win, they win a share of the pot also. Um, you know, support now, go fund me, because um, it's a lot of us and we're trying to do a lot of traveling and, you know, or yep. we may need to add a player that's past the deadline, um, so we may need a certain t- um, amount of money. So support in that aspect also is important for us. And um, I think most importantly, you know, showing up to the game. Yeah. Especially with it being close. Um, we, we like to make it, uh, like, make it feel like a old home game at Bramlage or, you know, how we used to get the sprints that are packed out. So, right. you know, having that type of support is important. And as far as the game, if I remember right, this was probably releasing on Wednesday on our site. So it would be this coming Friday. Is that right? Like 8 p.m. against Team Colorado? Is that is yeah. that correct? Yep. Um, how cool is it, I mean, to play not only in Kansas, of course, you know, and in a region that's going to have, you know, fans from K-State, KU, Wichita State, that kind of stuff. But then you can open up against an old Big 12 school and maybe some guys you've seen in the past. Oh, it's pretty cool. I don't think we'll uh, – I mean, we know the roster, but I know Marcus Hall through uh, playing in Turkey. I played against him in Turkey this past year. Yeah. Of course, Chris Copeland. And, of course, they have uh, other guys that play professional. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not too familiar with playing Colorado. I wasn't, you know – Sure, that's yeah, true. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't oh, know too much. You was. You may have seen yeah. a little of them, yeah. Yeah, Tay's, you know, Tay's old, so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, so, but at the same time, you know, you hear about players, you know, you know, uh, their skills, they know, you know, what you can do uh, against them. So it's all the same. This is something you guys have done. How many years have you guys played in this tournament now? This will be year four for me. Year four? Three. Three? Three? Yeah. Is this, I don't want to put words in your mouth and you can say no, is this, is this as good as you felt about a team going into the tournament? You know, you've got a, you've got a bigger roster. I think more people maybe are aware of it. How do you feel about the team right now than maybe you did your last three or four trips to this? Well, it definitely feels better than last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Anything that feels better than last year. It's just because we – it was so much uncertainty then and we couldn't get the correct guys in place. And, you know, all the way up to game time, it was just, we wasn't sure who would be right. there. And it was just unfortunate. Um, I know in 2017 we had a full roster. We made a run in that. Um, we got to the Sweet 16. It just didn't end well like we wanted to. So it probably feels as good as that that year. Um, the format this year is a little different. So now we play yeah. three games in the first weekend, whereas in that 27 time we won two games and moved on to Brooklyn, New York. Um, but yeah, I'm just as confident as that year. And, and then same for you, like you guys talked about before we started, you had, what, six six guys last year, everything that, you know, you just dealt with yeah. that Tate talked about. Yeah. I'm sure for you it feels a lot more comfortable coming into this year. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, good players, you know, people that we played with um, in the past, you know, so that means the chemistry's there. Um, you know, we, like he said, you know, I think we feel a lot more confident this year, especially being in Kansas. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, yeah. being here, like, now is the opportunity to take advantage of it. And with the people that we have, like, it's going to be good. I feel great about it. I'll probably forget a name, but I know just from K-State, you've got you two. You know, Marcus Foster, of course, played at K-State and Creighton. Akeem Wright, I saw. Um, Javon Thomas now, I believe, is on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, DJ Johnson. I don't forget in some. Who am I, who am I missing Justin still? Justin Edwards. Justin Edwards, Justin. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, at, we also added Stephen Hurt. Yep. Yeah. The only um, non-Wildcat, if I'm right, is is Marcus Addison, am I saying the name yeah. the name right? What's, yeah. like, what's his story? Where is he from? What kind of player is he for K-State fans who've never seen this guy uh, play um, before? Well, Marcus is from Kansas City. Uh-huh. Best friends with Will Spratlin. Uh, okay. Was in his, uh, in his wedding. Um, but, you know, 6'5", wing. He played at Missouri Southern State, I think. Okay. Missouri State Southern. 
Um, he's been playing overseas for you know a few years in a lot of you know top leagues in Europe. Um, but he's a, just a, overall a really good player. Got great size on him. Great shooter. Um, last year in TVT, he had 25 for us. Yeah. yeah. Madison score. <laughs> so you know he can fill it up. It's just it's another added score on the wing for us. Defends pretty well also. So um, he he fits in perfect with us to be honest. How much how much prep? As a team, can you guys do? I mean, because I th- unless I'm wrong, it's kind of probably on you guys to organize it and get it together and that. Like, how much do you get to work together? What what do you work on as a group, whether it's talking or working on the floor together coming into this tournament? Uh, DJ's done a, DJ Johnson's done a great job of, you know, making itinerary for the guys and getting people involved uh, a couple weeks, you know, before, uh, you know, game time. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, people are busy. People have family. So people are in and out of Manhattan. But it's still fine because, you know, you have to, you know, develop different chemistries with different guys, you know. So it's all, it's only going to be five people on the court. So we just have to work with what we have. And, you know, mostly everybody's here. So, yeah. um, and like I said, the, the outside chemistry is there as far as, like, us knowing each other. So... It's, once, if that's good, then it's pretty easy to develop like on the court chemistry. I want to ask more about the tournament, but I can't help not ask after I heard that. You mentioned family. Uh, everyone knows, most of you know at this point, you've added you know, someone to your family. Yeah. How tough is it for you, man? I mean, to like... Wow, what's up, bro? <laughs> I mean, to prep for this wow. while dealing with the newborn, man, you know? Uh... <laughs> wow. Dude, this is a genuine congratulations, all that is, you know? He does it for the camera, man. No, he, I'm oh, not man. J.O. Wow. Oh. Wow. Love you, J.O. But, yeah, how is he getting ready for that, man? I mean, I mean, is, is the girl, girl going to take care of all of this while you're getting ready for this? How, how tough is this? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's tough times, but, I mean, that's family, you know. Um, you you live through it, you overcome it, and uh, everything's fine. You know, she, she does a great job of taking care of my son, you know, while I'm always working out and yeah. everything. And, She's at the gym for the most part, you know, with me at times, you know, just because I want him to be around. Also her, but uh, him just to, like, hear the basketball dribble right now and just to see me work out and everything because he likes to, he likes to look at me, yeah. you know, when, uh, when I'm working out. So uh, it's, it's nice, and it's a, a certain motivation that really – that it's another level that you tap into, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, it's, it's wonderful. I think I asked maybe a similar question to this when you guys came to the press a week or so ago, but I'm curious how, how this game is played compared to a college game, to a game overseas, the intensity level. I'm sure it's, it's totally different, but like who's calling, you know, how many sets are you guys going to run, how organ- all those kind of questions. How different is it than college or, or playing overseas? Um, to me, I think it's, it's more pro-like because it's okay. all pros, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, College basketball is a little bit more structured, um, whereas you have a coach who has a certain system in place. Whereas in overseas, you might run a play, but a lot of time it depends on you just make a play. Right. Um, and in this league, in this tournament, you got a bunch of people that can just make plays. Um, kind of, sort of like I won't. It's obviously not the NBA. Sure. But that's, that's what the type of basketball you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of more isolation and things like that. People are going to run sets. Right. Um, but I think more so for us, like, we work on a lot of the individual aspects, but more so defensively, rotations or how we're going to guard ball screens and those type of things are important because when you get that isolation or you may get a ball screen, you got to know these people that you're playing against tendencies, what they like to do, whether you should go under Especially or over Especially in that Elam ending. Stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's when it yeah. really matters. Like, you got to be real detailed. Be so let's detailed. talk the Elam ending, because if I understand it right, and I hope you guys correct me if I'm wrong, because I've never watched a game, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, the whole way through when they've used it. But isn't it pretty much you, you, you get to a score when you're up by – I'm just going to make something up. So if it's 70 to 60, they say first team to 75 wins, something like that. Is it that? Is it that? And when do they put it in place? And just to people who haven't seen it, because it's totally different. Like, ex- maybe explain that ending it's, to us. Um, basically, the Elon minute is four-minute mark in the fourth quarter. They turn the clocks off and set up the shot clock. Right. Um, whatever the high score is, they add eight points to that, and that's your target score. So, essentially, they try to eliminate late game fouls, fouls and, yeah. stalling, and all of that. And... Both teams got to play to that game. So, like you said, if it's 70 to 60, the target score would be 78. Got it. So, the yeah. team that got 60 got to score 18 points, yeah. whereas the team that got 70 got to score 8. 
Um, and there's been times there's been teams to come back and win and things of that nature, but that's essentially what they learn in there. How do you – I know you haven't played a million games under that, that rule, but – do you think it helps the team that's behind more or the team that's ahead more? Which would you? I mean, I know it, it could be different no matter the situation, but do you feel like you'd rather be needing to score 18 with no time on the clock or be down 10 with four minutes left? It was terrible. For <laughs> we, yeah. we, 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 our first time playing in the Elon in there was bad because throughout the game, the team was playing, we was up 18, 19 points. Yeah. By the time the Elon ended and got it to play, we were up like 11 mm -hmm. but we had six players right so um, we went to the Elon in the very tired on top of we wasn't getting um, and this is like yeah. a shot but we wasn't getting the, the calls that we thought we should sure so now you're tired and you're angry and that's not a good recipe mm -hmm. um, and we ended up losing we was up 11 going into it right and that team ended up scoring last year it was seven they added one point this year so they ended up scoring 18 points to beat us, and they won by one, I think, or two. Yeah. Um, so, but I think, regardless of all that, the most important thing is going to the Elon and up, because it's a shorter distance yeah, to it. Right. You know, it's basically three possessions, if, you know, three to four possessions, and I think that's most important, going it, to it up. There's been people who talk about using that in all basketball and that kind of stuff. It just sounds to me, it sounds interesting, but man, it changes the game, and really, like you guys learned last year, it sounds to me like, it, it kills a team that doesn't have depth because now you can't build that lead and then hold the ball for 30 seconds and get fouled or take a shot at the end. Mm -hmm. You got to play basketball all the way through. All what would you think? Because some, what would you think about that ending being used in more basketball? Do you like it, or would you rather just let's let the clock run out and play regular basketball? You want me to answer? I'm curious. I mean, you answer the question. Personally, I don't. I, <laughs> per, personally, I, I can understand where it's coming from, um, but I don't see it trans transcending to maybe like the NBA or something yeah, like that yeah, I don't see because it. that takes away buzzer beaters and all that stuff Damian yeah. Lillard shot and oh my goodness yeah. something like that at the yeah. end of a buzzer it gives it more entertainment now you still have game winners in this where sure. you know teams are fighting it out and you both score seven points it's and someone but yeah. it's just not the same yeah. um, so what I I'm not sure if it would be implemented into the, like the NBA or even college, it's a great, I think it's a great idea, it's very innovative, and I'm always a supporter of people being creative. Yeah. But I don't know, especially tradition also, it plays a big right. part. A lot of people don't want the NBA game to change. Yeah. So it won't change. Do you, I just think it's an interesting topic now, and I want to get back and ask again how they can support you specifically on the site. But you look at stuff like the Elam ending, you look at the big three using four-point shots, like that kind of stuff. You say you like innovation. You guys ever think about a four-point shot, you know, whether it's in, in college basketball, the NBA? I know that sounds crazy, but back in Steph shooting them right yeah, back in the late 70s, there wasn't a three-pointer, and it sounded yeah, crazy true. then, too, you know? So. It did sound crazy. I think it, it it's, it's going to sound crazy until it happens. Yeah. And it's happening for maybe a decade. But, you know, for the big three, I think it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, that's half court. Yeah, you know, it's right. Half court. So, so, and but I, I don't. I think for the sake of the purity of the game, say for instance in the NBA, I don't know if they would do it. It's hard that, to picture. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. once they do it, it's gonna like trickle down to, you know, college. Oh, absolutely. And mm -hmm. if you see the four point shot happening in high school, <laughs> kids out there, kids are gonna do, and it's gonna ruin the game. So yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. think that that will happen. Even, and even in <laughs> even in NBA, I don't think they're they're fine where they at. Their rules are set. And yeah. I don't think it's gonna change. Thomas is the best way to do it. I mean, as far as supporting you guys. If you go to your Twitter page, it's pinned at the very the very top. You click on the link, you walk through there, you sign up. Doesn't, that doesn't cost anything, of course. You can go fund me if you want. But like you guys said too, doesn't like I think if you guys win, don't they split up like two hundred thousand dollars amongst your supporters and like ten thousand to the biggest one or something like that? Yeah, so you. I think you know more about that. I personally don't know how the money yeah. goes. Like I think that's that. what I saw. Yeah, you, so, like, yeah. So it's your, your team wins two million. But your team really wins 1.8 million. Right. The other 200,000 mm. goes to those fans. Whoever was the top supporter gets that big check. Right. I seen it last year. Um, the top supporter for overseas league. She was holding her check and uh -huh. she did nothing. Just supported, man. She, yeah. Oh, she, she did. Was, uh, 
I guess ten thousand dollars. Like ten thousand dollars, ten or twenty one of them. Mm. But then if but you look at the list, like everyone below gets money everybody too. Everybody gets mm. below, so yeah. you know you can walk away with a thousand dollars and be fine. That's an extra thousand dollars in your pocket. You can use it towards whatever. That's mm, great, yeah. just for being a supporter. So um, that's why I think it's important because you never it. It's kind of like the NCAA tournament. You never know who's going to make a run. You right. never know who's going to win, and it could be your year where, as a supporter, I don't want to say you your guys' money. site wrong. I'm pulling up my phone real quick because I don't want to quote it wrong. But the Twitter site, uh, at purpleblack2k19, all one word. We'll put a, like a picture of Lando or something on, on this yeah. video okay. to where you guys can see it. But, yeah, it's easy, man. Like, I, I, like I put on Twitter, Facebook, I was lazy for a long time, yeah. didn't do my job. And I was like, I'm going to go look at this, see how hard it is. Yeah. And it wasn't. I mean, I'm not saying that to sell it. I'm not getting anything for this unless yeah. they win. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, but, yeah, it's, it's an easy thing to do. It's a cool thing to do. And, again, uh, if you're around Wichita or in Kansas or stuff, it's Friday night. 8 o'clock. I don't know what kind of crowd's going to be there. Like I said, with the schools that are there, it's going to be, I think, quite an atmosphere in that building. I'm pretty uh, sure the, yeah, the Wichita region has um, <laughs> yep. sold the most tickets. Yeah. And they sold the most tickets by, like, how much triple the, figures. Yeah, how much is the, the revenue for... I don't know what the overall revenue. The last time I checked, it was over two hundred thousand dollars. That's crazy. Yeah. I saw a site that, that broke down by region the amount of supporters. Yeah, and yeah, the, the Wichita region was so, so good, so astronomically nice. higher than everybody yeah. else. So I'm assuming uh, with the three, you know, Division One schools here, yeah, that it's going to be packed out. Um, you got fans from everywhere that's coming also. So it should be a good audience. It's going to be a good time. I mean, it's rare that in late July a K-State fan could go to something and watch guys from exactly. K-State play that matters. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a yeah. it's a pretty dead time, you know, mm-hmm. for sports like that. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, while I have you guys, we did, you know, uh, videos with like, you guys last year, and I think DJ, and I could be forgetting somebody even, but I loved talking about, like, playing overseas and the experience you guys have with that because a lot of people – when you, uh, I'll back up. When you look at a guy like Xavier Sneed and talk about going to the draft and not going to the draft, everyone says, oh, just, you can just go play overseas, you know? And, and that's a great living, no doubt about it. But I was curious if each of you guys, from your experiences, maybe starting with Martavius, would tell me something that's great about, you know, your experiences playing overseas and then maybe a challenge or an obstacle that somebody like me wouldn't, wouldn't know um, that's harder than I would imagine. I think the great part for me is just seeing the world. Um, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A lot of people don't go yeah. to Miami to be honest, and that's 20 minutes away. So, you know, being able to see the world, tell people about it, show pictures on my social media, um, and encourage them to get a passport and go, it's, it's always been something that I've been grateful for. Yeah. Um, you know, playing against Thank you. people Thank you. you've never thought you'd play against, or playing with people you never thought you'd play with, is also fun. Um, but I think, Thank you. I think the flip side is, uh, you know, being far away from family, that's the toughest part. Your family and friends, who you grew up with, who you played with, who you played with in college, um, the, it's always over the phone. Yeah. And it's tough. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, you know, for me personally, I'm alone. Um, you know, playing the game and watching Netflix, but that that only, yeah. you know, helps for so long. He calls me a lot. <laughs> I call Gip a lot because it's nothing to do um, a lot yeah. of times. You got to figure it out, you know, you find things to do, but... I think that's that's the most toughest part um, as far as being away, just being away from family and friends. Same kind of thing for you? Uh, pretty much. I mean, I think traveling, you know, I think traveling with my family is, is like the best thing, uh, you know, that I could have. Uh, just seeing and experience, you know, experiencing different cultures and, you know, trying to learn new languages, you know, like just stepping outside that's of the what, box, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it's about, like, just trying to learn and soak in as much, like, knowledge as possible, like, around the world. Um, and just like what he said, uh, you, you definitely miss your family, you know. Um, but I know for me, you know, coming back home, like, you don't, you don't really miss anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you're there, like, you know, you miss your family. Like, yeah. I miss my mom and everything, like, but I've had situations where I've had to come back home you know what I'm saying? And like nothing really changes. Sure. Then like you just want to jump back overseas. So it's just like I don't know, it's weird. So it's it's weird. The lang- the language oh. thing's funny because to me, like I'd be terrified to go to a place where the people don't speak English. Yeah. You know, was that mm-hmm. how weird was that at first? Um, well, the countries I've been to they speak English. They do good. Um, yeah. But learning a new language is always cool. 
or even teaching them because a lot of times you may run into people that know English right. and don't know it fluently. They're not really too good mm -hmm. with that, the grammatical part of it or how to say words the correct way. So, you know, helping them, um, you know, those types of conversations like I've had with people that are in Indonesia, they want to know all about America and stuff like yeah. that. And I, I want to know all about Indonesia. So those types of things I take with me and I like to compare it and of course, let yeah. people know, well, this is how they live over there. Or this is how they may eat their food. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's a blast. I, I know going to Indonesia my first time, I sat down at a long table and there was a bunch of food everywhere and everybody started eating with their hands. And I was just <laughs> confused. I'm like, yeah. do y'all have forks and spoons? And it was like, mm. oh no, at this specific restaurant, we only eat with our hands. And whatever you touch is what you have to eat. You did it? Absolutely. It was, yeah. it was, uh, the food so was great and it was fun. But you have to. You yeah. Have yeah. To, like, you, you don't, don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. That, yeah. that's exactly. the thing. But you, you find out that this is cool. Because I walk in the restaurant and the first thing they take you to is sinks and you just wash your hands with soap. Okay, yeah. So you're automatically clean. But then you go there and you pick up your rice with your hand. You pick up your chicken see, or whatever. See, but that's crazy though. It's crazy. I don't know. I can see, yeah, I, like, I can You know what I'm saying? Like, understand, like, soaking in culture, but yeah. I just, I don't know. It's like, like I'm saying his, his, his scooping his hands. Like, imagine <laughs> going after him. You got trust You him. see these hands going to your <laughs> rice. Like, nah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I would I do it just that. out of respect, but I, I don't know, man. man I, it's not about your hands for me, but like, I just, I don't know. Um, People always want to know, I do selfishly, and I think people watching, like, your guys' thoughts on the current program. How much time, if any, you know, in the last couple months have you been able to work out with, with the guys and just impressions from what you've seen from them this, this offseason? They're going to be good. They're hungry. Yeah. Like, and, you know, like, guys see that, see Barry and Dean put in work, so now they're putting in that extra work because they know it's there, you know. Yeah. And um, the fact that they made that run, I know me and him both are proud of them. Absolutely. And like, it's, it's unbelievable that the, the work that they put in because um, it's just like, they're all on the same page, you know what I'm saying? And when you're all on the same page like that, from the head coach down to the managers, you know what I'm saying? When everything's running structured like that, and everybody's excited to be there, and everybody's hungry to win, like that's the championship mentality, so. I mean, they're gonna have a good season, I feel like. And then you got I mean, you guys both, before you guys got to K-State, you probably know this, but K-State basketball was pretty bad for a pretty good stretch of time. You guys didn't deal with that as much, you know? You guys had turned it around and, and saw a lot of success, both of you guys did. But still, how much pride can you still take looking at that team, you know, two, three, four, five years after you left and saying, these guys are still really good. They're still winning titles, going to the Elite Eight. Like, how much pride do you still take in that, that you were a part of that? Man, I... Every time I come here, like, I grab, like, K-State gear, and I'm good for the fall. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I hit up Drew. I'm good <laughs> for the spring. So, yeah. like, I'm wearing nothing but K-State. Like, it's all I rep. Like, it's really, like, it's really K-State pride over here. And I'm sure it's for him, too. Yeah, I, I take a lot of pride in it more personally because um, some of the guys on the team, mostly it's been Cardi. Yeah. Um, I've had conversation with him, and he'll say things like, you guys laid the foundation, bro. Right. Like, like we want to do better than you guys. And then when you have kids that want to do that, the program's just gonna keep going up because we set the bar really high. Like that's not a bad thing, but set the bar really high, it's only up from there. And you know, I'm just happy that it's in good hands right now. And you know, I take a lot of pride in it. Everywhere I go, I got on either a shirt or pants or something. <laughs> yeah. You gonna know? I, I carry for me personally also. I carry my my Big 12 ring with me and yeah. my book bag everywhere I go in the world. So just in case someone, oh, you want a Big 12? I'll show you. I prove it to you. Every yeah. single time. Well, man, I appreciate it again. Uh, it'll be this Friday night, 8 o'clock. Get there a little early. It'll be Wichita. If you're around there, it'll be a great place to go. If you're in the state, go. If you haven't gone online to support them yet, you can donate to the GoFundMe, and that would help them out too, but you don't have to donate money. You can just go to the site on Twitter. Again, we will flash a video. I'm sure we can uh, of how to do it on this. So I just really appreciate the time. Artavia Serving, Thomas Gibson, uh, best of luck You know, this week and throughout this tournament. Thank you. So,